Hi, today we're going to be learning about scientific notation. First, let's talk about what scientific notation is. Scientific notation is a useful way of writing numbers that are very big or fractions that are very, very small. Okay, and it's because the reason it's called scientific notation is because it's often used in scientific contexts because we are often dealing with very, very, very big numbers or very, very, very small fractions in science. Okay, so let's take an example where we're just going to look at the number 2 million, which can be written like that. Okay, so this is the number 2 million over here. Now, this is the same as 2 times 1 million. Okay, I could write that as 2 times 1 million. It means the same thing. Okay, so this can also be written like this, 2 times, and then that 1 million can be written as 10 to the power of 6, because 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 will give me 1 million. Okay, so now this is another way of writing that, and this is a much shorter way of writing that. This is how, what we are going to be doing when we're writing in scientific notation. When we're writing in scientific notation, we take a number and we write it in this format where we have something, so like this, a, something times 10 to the power of something. And in this format over here, the a is always going to be something that is between 1 and 10. It can be equal to 1, but it must be less than 10. Now, technically, you can also get a negative as well. So I'm going to put the absolute value of A. So the absolute value of A must be something between 1, but it can be equal to 1, and 10. It must be 1 more than or equal to 1, and it must be less than 10. Okay, so that is what this one over here is going to be. It's always going to be something that is between 1 and 10. Then we've got our B over here, and that always has to be an element of integers. In other words, B is always going to be an integer value. It can't be a fraction of any kind. It has to be a whole number. It can be negative, but at this point, we're only going to be working with positive values for B, but it can go into the negatives as well, and we'll be learning about that next year. But for now, B is going to be a positive integer, but it can also go into the negative integers as well, just so you're aware of that. Okay, so this is how we write scientific notation. So this is something that you're going to have to get used to now. Okay, so let's have a look at some that you're going to be working on over here. Okay, so in this table, I've given you a few numbers in standard notation. That just means that they've been written as normal numbers, and you're going to need to write them in scientific notation. So I will do the first one with you to show you how to do it. Okay, so we take the 4 million that we've got over here, and we see we're going to, we, first of all, we need to write this in the form of something multiplied by 10 to the power of something. Okay, so first, if I look at this over here, I've got 4, and then I've got zeros. So I'm going to take that 4, which is my non-zero digit, I'm going to write that, and then I'm going to say times 10 to the power of, and now I need to find out what the power is. Now, remember, when you... Every time you multiply a regular number by 10, what happens is you end up adding a zero. So every time I multiply 4 by 10, I'm going to end up adding zeros. So over here, I've got six zeros, three six zeros over there. So I'm going to put over here to the power of six, because that means that I've multiplied by 10 six times, which is how I ended up adding on all of those six zeros over there. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to do the other three in this table.
Okay, so let's go through each of those. So the next one I've got over here, I'm going to be putting down a five times 10 to the power of, and now I need to see how many zeros there are. So I've got three, six, nine, 12, 14 zeros that I'm going to need to add on. So that means I need to multiply by 10, 14 times. So it's multiply by 10 to the power of 14. The next one, I've got eight times 10 to the power of, and I've got three, six, nine, 10 zeros. So I'm multiplying by 10 to the power of 10. And then the last one, I've got six times 10 to the power of, and here I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15 zeros. Okay. And now you can see all of these numbers have been written in this way over here, where you've got the digits split up into groups of three. Okay, separate into groups of three, so that it just makes it easier for you to see where you are in the number, to see what digit you're talking about and what value it would have in that number. It would be a lot, e a lot more difficult if they were all written like this. So that's why we write our, did our numbers in this format where we have the thousands being separated by spaces like this. It just makes it easier for you to actually see what's going on in the number. And that meant that when I was doing these powers over here, all I had to do was I had to count in the groups of three. So I could go three, six, nine, 12, and then 14, so that I, I don't have to count each zero individually. So that just, so that you are aware that that is why we write our numbers like that, is it just makes it easier for us to actually work with them and to be able to see what's going on in those, particularly these big numbers that we're dealing with. Okay. So that's what you should have got for all of those in that table. Okay, so now, Let's have a look at what happens when, in all of these, there was simply a single digit multiplied by 10 to the power of something. But now what happens if you don't have something that's just a single digit multiplied by 10 to the power of something? What happens if you've got more than one digit in your number that is not zero? So over here, I've got 25, I've got 250, I've got 2,500, I've got 25,000. So in all of these, I have now got two digits that are not zero. In all of the ones I did before over here, I only had one digit that wasn't a zero, okay? So now the way we're going to do this is going to be very similar, but you can't just be counting zeros. It's not going to work quite the same. So let's have a look at what we're gonna do for this. So first, let's have a look at what happens when we take all four of these ones that I've got over here and we compare them. Okay, so first we've got 25. Now, if I want to write this in scientific notation, I need to write it as something multiplied by 10 to the power of something, okay? Now, when I'm going to do this, first of all, I need to know how many 10s I need to multiply by, okay? And remember, our notation says that the A, which is what we're multiplying by 10 to the power of something, but the A has to be something between 1 and 10. It can't be equal to 10. It has to be less than 10. Now, this means that it has to be something that is a unit or a fraction with a unit, okay? So when I've got something that is a unit, it means that my decimal point has to be after the 2, okay? In this case, it has to be after the 2. It has to be after the first non-zero digit in my number. So in this case, the first non-zero digit in my number is the two. Okay, so let's have a look at this over here where I've got 25. When you take the number 25 to start off with, the, d the decimal place is after the, the five, okay? The decimal place or the decimal point, sorry, is always going to be after the last digit in your number, okay, whether it's a zero or not, it's always going to be after the last digit in your number, after the, provided you don't have any decimals, okay, then it's going to be after the unit in your number. So in this case, the unit is my five, but I need it to be after the first digit in my number when I write it as in scientific notation. So let's see what happens if I move it from here to here. How many places did I move it? I moved it one place. Now, in these examples over here, or the ones that we did before, if I take the number 2 million, and I can say, okay, well, let's rewrite this 2 million in scientific notation, I wanted my decimal point to be over here. Now, you couldn't see it in this example over here, 
but it is actually there. If there's nothing after it, it's a zero, then you don't need to write that comma. But that comma still exists, even though you can't see it, okay? The same thing over here, you couldn't see it. So how many places did it move? It moved one, two, three, four, five, six places to get over there to be after the two. And look over here. I multiplied by 10 to the power of 6, which is the same number of places that my, my comma moved. Okay, now when we were moving it, we were just counting the zeros earlier, but that is actually the same thing as what we are going to be doing over here. It's just we're not going to be counting zeros, we're going to be counting places that the decimal point has moved because when we're counting the zeros, we were actually counting the places the decimal that the decimal comma was actually moving. So over here, that is what we're going to be doing. We're going to say, okay, so at the moment, my comma is over there. I want it to be over here. I always need my comma to be after the first digit in my number, the first non-zero digit in my number. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it that many places. In this case, I'm moving it once. So it's going to be multiplied by 10 to the power of 1. So it's going to be 2 comma 5 times 10 to the power of 1. Okay. Now let's have a look at the next one. We've got 250. Okay, so in the number 250, where is our decimal point to start with? It is always going to be after your unit. In this case, the unit is a zero. Okay, so that is going to be over there. Now I need my comma to be after the first non-zero digit in my number. So I need it to be over here. So how many places is it going to move? I need it to go one, two places. So now I'm going to write this as 2,5 because that's where my comma is going to be now. It's going to be 2,5 times 10 to the power of, of how many places did it move? It moved two places. Then let's have a look at 2,500. Okay, same thing is going to happen. I start off with my comma after my unit, which is over there, and I move 1, 2, three places. So it's still going to be 2,5 because when I move my comma, the comma is after the 2. And I don't need to write those extra zeros. Okay, so it's going to be 2,5 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3. And then the last one is 25,000. Let's just try that one as well. So in 25,000, my comma is after the last digit, which is a 0 and I move it one, two, three, four places. It has to go behind the last or the first non-zero digit. So that's going to be 2,5 times 10 to the power of, it moved four places. So times 10 to the power of four. And now let's go and use our calculator and check all of these. Okay, so the first one I had was 2,5. I, I said that the scientific notation is 2,5 times 10 to the power of one. Let's see if that does give us 25. So 2.5 times 10 to the power of 1 equals 25. So it is the same. It means the same thing. The next one, 2.5 times 10 to the power of 2 is what I said the scientific notation is. Let's see if it is equal to 250. And yes, it is equal to 250. Then the next one, I've got 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3. And that gives us 2,500, which is what I had over there, which is what I started with. And then the last one, 2.5 times 10 to the power of 4 should give me 25,000 equals 25,000. So when I am writing numbers that are not just a single non-zero digit with zeros after it in scientific notation, so if I have more than one non-zero digit in my number, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the decimal point from wherever it is, if you can see it, then you move it from where it is. If you can't see it, you it, it's that means that it's after the, the last digit of the number, and the last digit in your number it would be a unit. Okay? And you move it from there to right after the first non-zero digit in your number. So the first non-zero digit in all of these numbers happen to be two. Now that won't obviously always be the case. Okay, so now let's quickly do another example. Just one more before I give you some to do on your own. So if I give you the number 3570000000, okay, 
So we are going to write this number now in scientific notation. So first, if I look at this number, I need to see, okay, so where is the decimal point at the moment? It is after the last zero over here, which is my units. So it needs to move and it needs to go and move to the to be right after the first non-zero digit, which is the three. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. And that is where I want it to go. So three, five, seven, zero, 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 zero is going to be equal to three comma five seven. I need to write all of the non-zero digits. Now, if there was a zero in between the five and the seven, I would need to write that. Okay, but in this case, there's not. So three comma five seven times 10 to the power of, and now I need to see how many places did it move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. So it's times 10 to the power of nine. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. So in this table, you've got four numbers that you're going to write in scientific notation, and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these. Okay, so let's go through those. So the first one, you had 61510000000. So first of all, we're going to write down the six and put a comma down. You put a comma after the first non-zero digit, and then I'm going to write the rest of my non-zero digits up to the end of my non-zero digits. If there was a zero in between, I would need to write that one as well, but I'm not going to write any of the zeros that follow on after the last non-zero digit. So I write the rest of these as they are here. So 151, so I've got 6 comma 151 times 10 to the power of, and now I need to see how far our uh, decimal point moved. So it started over here and it went three places, six places, nine places, 10 places altogether. So it's the power of 10. Okay, next one, I've got 629000000. So again, I'm going to have 6, 29, and then I'm not going to write any of the zeros that follow on after the 9. And then I'm going to have times 10 to the power of, and the number of places that our decimal point moved is 3, 6, 7, 8 places. Okay, then over here, I've got 3, comma. Now here you have to be careful. In these ones over here, we did not write any zeros down. But in this case, I am going to write these two zeros because they are between non-zero numbers. So what we need to do is all zeros that are after the, the last non-zero digit, we leave those out. But any zeros that are before the last non-zero digit or between non-zero digits, we have to write those. 
Okay, so I'm going to be writing these two zeros. So it's 3, 0, 0, 2. And then times 10 to the power of, and now we see how far did our decimal point move. It went 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 places. Then the last one, same thing as this. I need to write any zeros that are between non-zero digits. So I'm going to have 6, comma, and then I've got 0, 2, 0, 3. And I'm not going to write any of the rest of them because they are not between non-zero digits. But I do need to write these ones. So I've got 6, 0203 times 10 to the power of, and now my decimal point moved, 3, 6, 9 places. So it's time 10 to the power of 9. Okay, so now we know how to write numbers that have been given to us in standard notation and write them in... Uh, scientific notation, now we're going to be doing the opposite. Now we're going to learn how to take a number that has been given to us in scientific notation and write it in standard notation. Okay, so in this example that we're going to be doing over here, we've got 6, 623 times 10 to the power of 14. Now when we were writing numbers, from and converting them from standard notation to scientific notation, we would write times 10 to the power of, and our exponent would tell us how many places our decimal point had moved. So now this has already been done for us. So we've been told that when this was written in scientific notation from the standard form, then the, the decimal point was moved 14 places, and it was moved from the right to the left. So now we are going to have to move it back again. So we're going to move it from the left to the right, also by 14 places, to put it back into standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say over here I've got 6 comma 6 2 3 and I need to move my decimal point 14 places to the right. So I need to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and that's where my decimal point is going to be now. Okay. But now I need to fill in all of these spaces with something. So I'm going to put zeros there. They can't just stay blank. So I'm going to put in all my zeros. And that is what I should get, how, what it should look like with my, once my decimal point has moved over here. So this is going to be 6. And then I want to try and write this again like I was doing earlier, or like you were given earlier is to have it in groups of three. So I'm going to put these together in a group of three. It always goes from your unit um, towards the left, so towards the bigger numbers. So I have my group of three here, then three there, three there, three there, and then these three are going to go together like that. So it's going to be six, six, two, three, zero, 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 zero 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 and finally the last zero 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 okay so that is what this is equal to over here but now i want to surely there must be some way of getting from there to there without having to do this in between stuff that we did over there so what i'm going to do now is let's have a look and see if we can instead of having to show all of our jumps and all of that see if we can figure out how many zeros we're going to be adding in without having to actually show it all like that okay so let's have a look over here in our original number that we were given, the number of decimal places that I had already was 3. Now I know that the decimal point needs to move a total of 14 places. Okay, that means that all of these should be 14 altogether. Okay, so to know how many zeros I'm going to add on, I'm going to take this 14 and subtract the 3 decimal places that I already have and that gives me 11. So that means that I should have 11 zeros altogether. So let's check it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 zeros. So now I know when I'm going to write this in, in standard notation, if I was going to go straight into the standard notation, I would start with my 6, 623 times 10 to the power of 14. And I'd say, okay, so I know I've already got three decimal places, I need to have these three plus extra zeros to make up this 14. So 14 minus 3 is 11, so I need to have 11 extra zeros that I'm going to be adding on. Okay, so now I'm going to have 6, 6, 2, 3, 0, 0, 
and there's two zeros, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven zeros altogether. And that gives me three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen places after that first six. So that's how many places my decimal point has moved altogether to get to the end of the number over here after my final unit, which is a zero. Okay, now you can also figure out how to um, put your spacing in like this uh, just by looking at your your exponent over here and seeing, okay, the, the 14, that is one less than the total number of digits I'm going to have in my number altogether because I need to have also the 6 over here. So there's going to be 6, there, there will be 15 digits in my number altogether, which is a multiple of 3, so I can just divide it up into groups of 3. If it wasn't a multiple of 3, I would have to have an extra digit or an extra 2 digits before I start my groups of 3. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. So in this in this table, you have got four, di four numbers that have been written in scientific notation that you are going to convert to standard notation over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these. Okay, so let's see what you should have got in this table. So the first one, we've got 9,25 times 10 to the power of 6. So I'm going to start off with my 9. And now I already know that I've got two decimal places over here. So that's the 2 and the 5. And I need to have 6 altogether. Um, so 6 places to altogether after the 9. I've already got 2, so I'm going to say 6 minus 2 gives me 4. So that means I need to have 4 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And now let's just split this up into groups of 3. So that's what you should have got for that number. If you don't write it in groups of 3 like this, it's not the end of the world. It just is a bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, then the next one, I've got 6,258. So 6,258. Now, this already had three decimal places. I need 16 places altogether after the 6. So I'm going to have 13 extra zeros that I'm going to add in. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then splitting up into groups of 3 gives me this. So you should have had 6, 2, 5, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like that. Okay, the, last, the next one. We've got 2305, and now again, I've already got three decimal places over here. I need to have 10 altogether after my 2, so I need to have 10 minus 3 is 7 zeros I need to add in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and let's just 
put in our spaces over here to make it easier to read like that and then the last one I've got 804 now in this one again I've got two decimal places I need eight places after the eight altogether so I'm going to say eight minus two is six so I need to add in six zeros so one two three four five six and then we're going to put in our spaces like that to make it easier to read and that's what you should have got for all of those in that table and that's how you work with scientific notation now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson it's important to practice 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 if you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below the worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson if you found this video helpful please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as i upload them